Okay, I'm here fitting the teeth configurations that we developed here. And uh, it's very important that, uh, that the rolling component fits within the width of the powertrain line. If you wanna go back, you can see an old video of me actually doing the layout to get the configuration of the tooth. Now, each one is slightly different and it's a very, very delicate process. In other words, there, you know, it's very little, and I'll show you the difference between the largest tooth and the smallest tooth in terms of clearance. And remember, we're working with something that is from 1860. So this is 140, 65 years old. So, uh, you know, there's probably some wear in it. Now, what's great about the graphite lubrication that's on these gears is it allows me to roll these jigs I've made of the tooth configurations and it leaves a little mark. And the brilliant part is, is I've got a little, uh, the dihedral pitch located on that. And see that little mark left right there? That's exactly in line. And so that tells me that that tooth is rolling in and out of those gears in a perfect configuration. So all I need now is to roll the whole set of gears, which are all about five thousandths of an inch in width and determine which is the width, and it'll show me which one is rolling the best. And there they are, sort of showing up. Uh, that'll give me the configuration of the tooth that I have uh, yet to shape on the ends. But we're gonna work on, uh, well, developing the wedge. And that uh, was a bit of a process all in and of itself. Now you can see each tooth has been fitted to each socket numbered because they're all slightly different. Important part is that the shoulder the same uh, from the uh, diameter of the gear because we're going to use that location to mark our, 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 our uh, depth clearance or our root clearance, right? The root diameter, which is already marked on the gears. So these are a little longer. Now the reason I did the teeth in this way is you remember I said that the, uh, this is uh, air dried to about 12 to 15% moisture and I wanted to leave the last cut to be end grain because I don't want any checking in here. I think any checking in, in these from drying will cause uh, you know weakness in the tooth. And these will be soaked in a paraffin uh, type of lubrication that displaces the water and so they'll never change in shape. So that, that's important to note. Now what I did was I took a shim and I laid it on the curve and I marked where it's going to fit into the top. Oh, sorry. And this is my angle of the wedge. Okay. This line represents the bottom of the wedge because it's tapered. And from that, I cut one out of pine with the track saw. And I've, I've, I'll show you where that, so that, that just slides in and is tight. Now I checked how it is. There's variation on all of them. And uh, I'll show you how much variation there is. You can see that I've marked the top of the casting on that location. But if I stick here, that's tight. And you can see the range that that, you know, and there's, see, there's a little bit of play. And so these have to be hand plane fitted. Once again, they have to be marked uh, so that they fit in the right location. So anyway, that's what's next as far as... Um, Developing the teeth, I'll do that at the shop. And uh, I've got all the information I need here today. And I can leave these guys alone to film the movie. There's quite a few camera trucks across the street. I don't know what movie it is, but anyway, thanks for watching.